Kind enough to join us today in the Illini Enquirer podcast is Jay Lehman, All-American linebacker, Illini Enquirer football analyst. And, and Jay, I was hoping to give you an offseason here, man, before I brought you on. But uh, you're kind enough to join us and give us your thoughts on sure. something. I, I'm a little surprised. I, I think really surprised probably October, November. I would have thought Tony Peterson gets a couple of years. Uh, sure. But uh, one year in, Tony Peterson uh, is out as offense coordinator. Brett Beal was making this big move. What was your reaction to it? Uh, first, I was surprised. Uh, it wasn't like shock and awe, but I did. I, I was surprised by it. Um, and, I, and I looked at what happened. I actually don't think it was the season. The season played into it. I think what happened after the season had more to do with the change in direction. Why do I say that? Okay. I say that because we lost a player in due span that you know, didn't have any qualms with the coaching staff that we know of. Uh, or whatnot. I think he simply went to a program that he felt he could excel as a receiver better. I think when they went on the recruiting trail, they realized a little bit how limited they were to recruit certain positions. We see what they wanted to emphasize on. We saw the one to emphasize offensive line. We saw their ability to get some backs, the outside linebackers. I think they've got a lot of good players and Akis and I might be mispronouncing his name, but you know, some of these guys that they, they got in, but it was about those positions that got highlighted. And what I think they saw was, hey, recruiting quarterbacks and receivers might be tough. And in college football, we need that. And I think the Tommy DeVito coming as well, who fits really well with Tommy DeVito? Was he going to fit well into Tony Peterson's system? So I do think the season had a large portion of play into it. I don't think that was the defining factor, though. I think they wanted to get through the recruiting season, number one. But number two, who they were able to recruit, what they heard on the road, what kind of transfer portal interest they got really played into this decision. And I have no inside knowledge of that. That's just how I look into it. I think that was a big deal. Yeah, I I don't disagree that that has to play a role, Jay, that uh, do you have confidence moving forward that Tony Peterson can fix the quarterback room? Do you have confidence that he can get the game breakers you need, right, to succeed in the Big Ten? Because, you know, obviously Brett made this hire as his first hire. Right. And he's admitting it was a, it was a mistake to hire Tony. Sure. Perry. Um, but obviously the season had a lot to do with it. Right. Because sure. they took steps back. I, I know stats aren't the perfect thing, but in most statistical categories, they took a step back this year from what they did the year prior under Rod Smith. And I think we especially see the passing game really struggled. So what do you think Brett Bioma saw on the field that made him say, this is going to work long term? Yeah. So, so hundred percent agree with you. Uh, on that, uh, I would say to Tony Peterson's defense, we're not sure how much he had a healthy quarterback around, right? I mean, because Peters gets her, comes out that Art Sikowski was, I would say, a hiding injury. It was an undisclosed injury to the fans, right? And But nobody knows more about it than Brett Bielema and Tony Peterson. They are able to get a good grade on it. I think what it came down to was if we watch any other team on here, the ability to get easy completions is there. There wasn't an ability to get easy completions in this offense, right? Um, Even if we watch relatively inept offenses, let's take Iowa, right? They they could complete a hitch route for seven, seven yards. They could complete a boot consistently, right? They could complete a little option route, right? Um, and I, And I would just say, we were not able to do that. Remember, we would joke and exhale and be like, oh, we got a completion or, oh, we got some yards after the catch, right? And I think Brett realized that we've got to have more out of the position. Now, it was our assessment and giving Tony Peterson the benefit of the doubt, and I said this during the season, uh, that maybe the horses weren't in the stable for the passing attack. They certainly had their horses in the stable for the uh, offensive line. And maybe they didn't take advantage of it like they needed to. But I think the lack of easy completions I think the lack of development at the receiver position with some of the transfer portal guys that didn't, they didn't have it. Uh, and, and also, um, you know, having, you know, three decent tight ends and we used them, but we always felt we could use them more for the amount of amount they were on the field. Right. I mean, they had decent production, but we always felt like we could use them more. And so I think at the end of the day, he realized, man, we really, really need uh, to have easy completions. And then number two, I would say this, I'm not sure what Tony Peterson was like as a recruiter. I'm not, I I don't think he was the top. I don't know if he was the bottom. He's also not a young and upcoming coach. 
Brett Bielema's history has been, I take young coaches and I make them head coaches. You know, if you look, and Ryan Walters is, is probably the next uh, one, one of those in time um, at the DC position. But I think he had like eight or nine at Wisconsin that went on to be head coaches, right? And uh, I think he probably want to get a guy that has a chance to be like that, a head coach someday. And uh, he would kind of be the senior statesman of the team then. And it, even at a young, you know, I think he's just over 50 or so. So it, it, those are the two factors I would throw in there. Yeah, I want to talk about the potential name that uh, is sure. up here, Jay, in, in a little bit here. But I, I think, like, you know, you and I try to give Tony, we try to be fair to him, right? Like, he didn't have his sure. guys. He didn't recruit any of these people outside of Arthur Sikowski, right? Maybe Jafar right. Armstrong. Um, right. But you see what Ryan Walters is able to accomplish with guys he inherited, right? And, and develop, sure. put them in the right position to succeed. And I don't think any of us expected Tony Peterson to have a top 40 offense with what he had. Sure. Which, could they have been top 80? Yeah, I do. I think they could have been that in the right kind of situations if, if injuries go your way. Um, so what do you think? Because Brandon Peters, before the last four games, felt like he was having the, his worst year, right? Um, I, I felt like the tight ends, you mentioned it could have been better. And, and even, I think, internally, Jay, they think the offensive line could have been even better. So why do you think he was not able to get the most out of it? I, I mean, that's – First of all, all true points. Why why was he not able to get the most of it? I think just to po- juxtaposed against Ryan Walters it's and tough. the improvement. Like well, let's say Ryan Walters' defense continued like the first three weeks of the season, right? And then you had the offense. I don't think you'd have that stark of a contrast, right? Because it's like, hey, it is what we got. Offense and defense struggled, and I hired both these guys, and I'm the head coach, you know. So like, but I think when you saw what Ryan Walters was able to do, we saw how important coaching was. We saw the kind of players and the way that um, the way he connects with players, the way he's able to connect with recruits, how, you know, widely, I mean, he's highly acclaimed across all college football circles. Right. And so I think it doesn't help when you got the superstar on this side and you're going against, you know, a veteran coach, but certainly not a flashy hire or a flashy recruiter. Uh, Doesn't mean he's not a good coach. Right. But I, I would say this, I, I don't think, um, Brandon Peters had no favors. I think six years, five offensive coordinators, I believe. Um, and he was hurt early on in the year. So he struck. It's, it's very hard to say, okay, this, this or that, or Brandon would have been better. But what, what I was, it's always my thing that I think the offensive coordinator has to transfer confidence to the quarterback. I really do. Like, I, they've got to get their quarterback to be confident, to be the leader. I think we saw that last two or three games a little bit. It just didn't happen soon enough. And we didn't see enough chances being taken. And when we did see chances being taken, it was so out of context, like in the Wisconsin game, we're like, well, why aren't we running the ball at all? Right. It was like feast or famine. And a lot of times, and I said this too, I think Tony Peterson had the right play call uh, in the Maryland game, the last drive, they had guys wide open on some plays that they had schemed up Maryland on. They just couldn't protect again, going back to the offensive line. I think that's going to be the biggest question of the season is why wasn't the offensive line as good as we thought they were going to be. Uh, and I think with the veteran players there and them not maybe execute, not played a role into it as well. Jay, this is a pretty big statement by Brett, right? Um, that this isn't good enough. Like we're raising the bar here, like five and seven, you might have, you know, we, we had some good takeaways towards the end of the season because you had some good wins, but yeah, I think right. he sees this as a missed opportunity. And the offense was the big reason. I mean, full stop that they didn't make a bowl game. Right. So He's like, hey, this isn't good enough. But also, this is a pretty big commitment from Josh Whitman financially to, to buy out an OC and, and bring in another one. Uh, as an alum of the program, what, do you, what does this move say to you? Well, it's definitely a different standard. I think, number one, it says it's a different standard in town, right? I mean, I don't think we, we would have this. Five and seven would be acceptable usually. And we would say, oh, we, you know, we were close, but no cigar, right? Um, and I think looking back on it a little bit, I think Brett, if he goes back to those Maryland and Purdue games, those fourth down calls, uh, I think he takes ownership for it, but I think it'd be different if he had more trust as offensive coordinator. I really do. Right. And so it comes back on him. Ever said, why is he going for it? And he's thinking to himself, well, the reason I didn't go for it is I don't trust our offense can get it. Well, why don't I trust the offense can get it? So if I, if I play back the season and those are two games, and maybe also be a third game we could have won. 
and now I have an eight win season and I could be in a bowl game with possibly a nine win season like Purdue, who is a team we have looked at that is on par over the years, uh, talent and recruiting wise and everything uh, in, in, in location with Illinois that, that, that better than us under Jeff Brown, for sure. Um, wow. We had a miss. We could have been Purdue. Uh, why weren't we Purdue? Well, we didn't score enough. Right. And so I think that's what he saw. I do think it takes a lot of humility to say, my, my first hire was bad. I made a mistake. Hey, Josh, I made a mistake. Buy this guy out. I'm going to bring, I'm going to do it the right way, you know, and get a guy in. Uh, but it definitely sets a different standard than what we're used to. Right. Yeah. He does not want to do that. And let's remember the big 10 West, the last couple of champions have had two losses in, in, in the, in the conference. And, and, and it was almost three losses this year. If you look at it, right. It was really close. I mean, so those games made a difference. You get some of those wins in those games. We weren't that far away with the Rutgers game and everything. I mean, to being in that big 10 West race, and so that's, I think that's the frustrating thing. It says, if we're going to be competitive in this place, we've got to throw the football better. Just no doubt. All right, Jay, the name that's been brought up, I've heard this name too, uh, not a done deal yet uh, as we're recording this on, on Wednesday afternoon, but certainly had a name on my list last year uh, that, that I thought I probably would have been more excited on paper uh, if Brett Buehlman would have hired him last year, but now you're even more excited if he can lock down Barry Lunny Jr. out of sure. UTSA. We saw that offense up close pretty good against Ryan Walters, Zachary Franklin, Sincere McCormick, Frank Harris. Um, what would you think of a Barry Lunny offense at Illinois, and what would that mean for uh, the program? So a couple of things. One, I you know, I, I'm doing some research on Brett Bielema. I actually saw something on – YouTube, like there's, there's, there's a little thing on Barry Lunny when he first gets the job at Arkansas. So it's a good little listen to, to watch that when he first, he was coached, I think at Bentonville high school in Arkansas. He got out of the college game for a little bit, was at Bentonville high. Uh, I think they had a lot of success there that when they went to Arkansas was, was maybe the tight end coach or something. Um, and uh, obviously they went to UTSA after, you know, kind of went around and, and obviously had some good success there. You a car Franklin's sincere McCormick, Frank Harris, you talked about all that. And so, I one, he's got history with Brett. Number one, two, he, we saw what UTSA's defense offense did to a Ryan Walters defense. Now, Ryan Walters defense had not yet grown or adjusted or improved yet, but it was pretty impressive what they were able to do. Um, and let's not forget, although they threw the ball a lot, they were they wanted to run the football with Sincere McCormick, you know, but they had to throw it a little bit because that was what was open. So I think with Tommy DeVito coming in with who we have at running back in Chase Brown, the ability to throw the football better with somebody that he knows that is an up and coming coach at UTSA. I mean, a guy like Barry Lunny, I no, no knock to a trailer at UTSA. Cause I think he's going to turn that program into a pretty substantial uh, group of five team over the years. Uh, you're, you're, it's really hard to keep coordinators there that are good. Yeah. Right. And so we, we Barry Lunny's going to get offers. And so I, if they're able to get Barry Lunny to, to sign the dotted line, I think it's a great hire. I think it's, it matches the mold of a young up and coming coach who eventually could be a head coach and he played the position of quarterback. So did Tony Peterson. So I think that's going to help as well. Uh, run pass option. He, he runs that a little bit. Jay uh, fakes the, how do you expect that to fit what Illinois currently has? If, if one the higher, right? This is all, sure. you know, if he's the higher, how, how would that fit this crew? Because I, I do think, Brett's going to have a little bit different, right? I think he's going to have the same core principles sure. in a run power offense, you know, have his tough, smart, dependable thing, but it feels like there's going to be a, a little difference, especially in how they pass the ball. Sure. Well, for, first and foremost, let's, let's just talk formation. I, you know, we largely, they were an under center team, 12 personnel. And that just means two tight ends, one back and, you know, two receivers. I think what we saw more out of, UTSA was a lot of 11 and, and 10 personnel, one tight end, one back, or, or no tight ends, uh, you know, four receivers. And so I think it starts out with, we'll get more shotgun with traditional shotgun with Chase Brown to the side. If, you know, um, McCray is in the football game, Josh McCray, we could see more pistol, which is where the back is behind. You still had a shotgun and you can still run zone read and you can still run run pass option out of the pistol, right? So we'll see more pistol. We'll see more of that, but a largely a lot of the same plays. I think we'll see stretch plays and whatnot, but I also think you're going to see more quarterback run with Tommy DeVito, which is going to make it one of the things that really hurt us. And we saw this in some games, especially the Rutgers game. 
after it came out, the outside zone was the best play for Illinois. We saw what we called the fast flow from the defense, meaning they were just like, okay, they're going outside. We got to get to the outside. Right. And what was good about Tony Peterson is he had some counters to that in the Northwestern game. And you saw how effective those were, but they had to be built in counters, meaning they were reverses to Isaiah Williams. They were, uh, different throwback plays, right? Well, now with Tommy DeVito being a more mobile option, now the counter is just the quarterback keeps. Yeah. Now now I'm, now I'm going to stretch over the right. And if I see fast flow and linebackers go, I go up for six yards straight up the field. And I think that's what quarterback is. I'm, it, it, this is a really simple concept, but it always comes down to math. If I'm under center and I hand the football off, it's really 11 on nine, okay? So if I can make two guys miss a tackle, okay? Or be out of the picture and everybody blocks, it's a touchdown. When I go to where the quarterback's running the football, it's 11 on 10. I got to make one man miss. And if everybody blocks, I'm out the gate. So there's a difference, right? And so that's basically the basic uh, football numbers aspect of it. I think Tommy DeVito and Barry Looney Jr. are going to come into and the RPO game. Can we get an RPO game consistent where you can throw that slant on the money like we saw with Zachary Franklin bang our corners at? Yeah. Uh, Isaiah Williams probably could be happy about this. Jay, before I let you go, how tough is that? For a player, I'm thinking of like Reggie Love. This would be his third offense coordinator in three years. Isaiah Williams, I believe, his third in four years. Like, how, how difficult is that for a player, or, or do they just roll with the punches? Do you guys just roll with the punches here? So, so I, I do think it's a little bit, a little bit difficult. But at the same time, what what choice do I have? Right? If I want to play, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've got I've got to learn the system, right? And if I'm Reggie Love, no knock on Reggie Love, I, you know, he didn't play as much as he probably wanted to, right? So it's like maybe this is an opportunity for me number one. And then I think it's a maybe a little bigger shock to some of those offensive guys that committed. Uh, they're just getting used to college football, like the recruits. They got Beatty or Aiden Lawfrey or uh, Donovan Leary. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just, those are some of the guys like, Oh, I'm a totally new offensive coordinator coming in. Right. So it's totally, totally different. So I think it could be a little bit of a shock to them, but I do think we'll see more RPO. I think we'll see more quarterback run. I don't think we're going to get away from running the football. That's just not who Brett is. But I think he realized, man, we needed a little bit more something, especially to attract receivers here and to attract quarterbacks here. uh, That's going to make it more sustainable to win games down the stretch on third down. It's a big move, big move after one year. Jay Lehman, as always, thanks uh, for the insight, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Take care.